we are going from the vote by mail department, the canvassing board has authorized us to begin the tabulation of the ballots. So let's go in the tabulation room. All right, now we're in the tabulation room. The ballots have had the signature verified on them. The envelopes have been opened and they've been laid out. They've been put in the blue trays. They come over here to this press where we apply uh, 40,000 pounds of pressure to them for a couple of minutes just to flatten them out real good so they will run smoothly through the tabulation machine. And Tim here is gonna show us how we run them through the tabulation machine. Okay, first thing we do is put them in the jiggle machine to, so that they'll get a little air between them. And they'll float. And then he loads them in the tabulation device and if it can't read any of them, it will sort them out. It's gonna need to look quickly now because this Goes thing fast. rolls pretty fast. So what happens when that happens? Just what he's doing now. All right. Fortunately, those were red. They just stacked they just up improperly. Yeah. And now if, if there were several more to come behind it, mm -hmm. we'd turn the machine off as quickly as we can because that thing will create a yard sale in a heartbeat. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> so it counted them. It was just, it, it got ahead of itself. It yeah, tangled exactly. Yeah. yeah, once they make it there. Yeah. Now that one, for some reason, it outstacked because it didn't read it properly. Ah, oh, it's blank. See there? There you go. <laughs> All right. Good example. Yep. Yep. So it will read a large number. It'll read a small number. And what happens if it detects an error or it rejects a ballot or something's marked incorrectly yep. or wrong? That ballot then goes to the canvassing board for them to make a determination of what was the intent of that voter. And the Department of Elections has put together a manual about that thick mm -hmm. of, called the Voter Intent Manual for the utilization by the canvassing board to determine if, if the voter marked it this way, then it's counting for a vote for this person or it's not counted at all and all the different variations that they've come up with. You wouldn't believe some of the bizarre <laughs> markings that we have on these ballots. You know, it's, it's important that people take time, read the illustrated instructions that say, please completely darken the oval, and we show them mm -hmm. a darkened oval. Yeah. But many people will ignore that. They'll put check marks, they'll put X marks, okay. and the machine doesn't read X marks and check marks. So okay. those have to come out, go to the canvassing board to make a determination. Then we duplicate that ballot, mm. and we, we then start a pairing of the ballots. We have the original with a sequential number on it and then a corresponding duplicate ballot with a sequential matching number on it. Mm -hmm. And the duplicate, of course, is marked in accordance with the judgment of the canvassing board as to what it should be. Then the duplicate comes back and is run through the tabulation machine. Okay. If a voter leaves a, a category blank, like say an amendment mm -hmm. or an elected mm -hmm. official's, you know, sure. position, if they leave it blank, does the machine just skip over it yep. or does it mark it as an error? Well, it's called an undervote. Okay. And first, it, the machine will outstack it if we have it programmed that way. Then then we'll look at it and see you know, it's totally blank. Mm -hmm. So then we'll run it through with the machine turned, you know, programmed to let those pass through. Okay. And uh, these machines are highly, highly accurate. They're very sensitive too. Mm -hmm. If the voter happens to rest their ballpoint pen inside the oval, Hmm. But they think, oh, no, I'm going to vote for this one up here. Mm -hmm. And they then darken the other oval. The machine, most of the time, will pick up that single little dot. Wow. And it will count it. You know, it won't count it. It'll, it'll outstack it'll it and say, hey, this it. is something that needs a determination of the voter intent. Wow. Very interesting. Well, yes. Yep. So then once the uh, tabulation is completed in the official tabulation machine, it then comes over here and is put through the automated audit system and we won't run them through that today but this scanner here as you can tell is a very different scanner than that one over there mm -hmm. and this is what I was talking about before the head-to-head -head comparison of all the contests on the entire ballot 
and uh, the, the verifies the accuracy of the tabulation machine over here. It's a very excellent program and uh, very good in investment for the, uh, the verification of the accuracy. And it's far better to look at the entire uh, election ballot with all the contests than it is to just randomly choose one and mm -hmm. examine it. So we're, we're real proud of that. Interesting. So we intentionally built the walls here with these large windows in them mm -hmm. so that if anybody in the public would like to observe what's going on here, they're welcome to come by and just stand out there. When we have live ballots in here, we do not allow the public into this room. They can stand out there. They can sit out there. They can look and see what all is going on, both in the tabulation department and in the vote by mail and the canvassing board as well. There's our sitting area for the canvassing board. You can see we have TV monitors here. The, the um, camera on the lower left there is in the ballot opening room so people can sit here and see all the activities going on in the ballot opening. And then we have the uh, warehouse over there. That camera is uh, viewing in the storage area for the early voting ballots. Okay. For those who are not familiar, what is the canvassing board? Thanks. Good question. <laughs> Very good question. Sure. Uh, the canvassing board by law consists of the county judge who is appointed by the chief judge of the judicial circuit. In our case, it's the fifth judicial circuit. Mm -hmm. uh, the county commission chair or their designee and the supervisor elections or their designee. If the commissioner or the judge or the supervisor election, if any of those people are on the ballot, they cannot be a voting member of the canvassing board. In my case, I'm an advisory member of the canvassing board, but I don't have a vote because this year my uh, my name's on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So I'm there. I I'm, I'm still have to play my role as supervisor elections. Mm -hmm. I just don't get to vote on the canvassing board issues. Okay. And that's the way it should be. The two uh, monitors up top are for the observation of the ballot duplication process mm -hmm. so that anybody can sit here, they can look and see what did the original marking show and what is the duplicate marking going to show. And there again, it's transparency, transparency, transparency okay. through everything that we do. I All right. No, I had no idea you could come and watch the process. That's oh yeah. Cool. Yeah, sure That's can. Well, that basically concludes all of the, the in-house stuff. The other events are the precinct voting and the early voting. Why don't we move to another room where we have set up a, a mock uh, polling place okay. and walk you through very briefly what all goes on there. Sounds good. Okay. Stay tuned for more of this detailed and unprecedented access to the Lake County Supervisor of Elections. Mm -hmm.